Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I kind of want to go ahead and show you guys and talk to you guys a little bit about the upcoming two-week mayhem race, which actually starts in a couple of hours. And I want to let you guys know what I'm going to be playing. So it's not really going to be much of a surprise. I am going to play Low Life Righteous Fire one more time before the nerfs. So let's talk about it a little bit because a lot of people always say like, you know, Low Life RF is not beginner friendly, etc, etc, etc. It's not a good league starter and whatnot. And I'm here to see how well I can do uh, starting off as Low Life Righteous Fire. Now, one thing to note is I haven't played Low Life Righteous Fire in probably like two and a half months because I've been playing the beta for like the past three weeks. Um, and I just, you know, got a little bored of it. I was like, well, I've done Shaper. I've pretty much done everything. I don't really feel like playing it anymore. Um, but that doesn't mean I still don't want to do it one more time because it is truly just like obnoxiously overpowered. So this is my tree for my Magic Finder. Um, and it's like slightly adjusted from my other tree, and I think that this tree is much better actually. So this is kind of what the tree looks like. Um, the only thing we're not going to get on this tree, because we're not going to go magic find, right? Is we're probably just going to clip off uh, where this jewel is, these flask nodes, and then cut it off right here. And then instead we can spec into like arsonist, for example, for some more regeneration. Um... But yeah, so I mean like the basics would follow, right? So we're gonna we're gonna start off and go like <clears throat> probably out through the strength because I don't really think the regen is gonna help too much. Because we plan on leveling with righteous fire totems and you don't need mono regen at all for righteous fire totems. So the smartest thing to do would be path basically like this through here. Uh, and then definitely grab like discipline and training, probably even like elementalist for early game. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, we're not gonna have combat stamina at the start. But we will, for example, have totem damage because that's going to be really important. Um, if we can get, like, I think it's called, like, spirit. I, don't, I actually don't know what the jewel is called, but there's a jewel that gives you totem life based off of your strength. Um, and it prevents them from getting stunned. That's a pretty good jewel. Um, but again, we're only going to be totems for probably a day, so it doesn't matter too much. Pick up the adjacent strength here. Grab constitution. Excuse me. Oh, I have too many points used. Just kidding. Um... Uh, well, let me, like, pull off all this, then. XD, cap of pride, keep it K. Because I just want to show you guys what it's going to be like, uh, essentially, like, with the basic nodes. Because it's really cool, actually, like, how well this tree works out for a life-based build with totems, for example. So now, you could just path, like, this way up, um... But I'm just going to keep my tree looking exactly the same like this, so I don't really have to use too many regrets. The cool thing is, like, Arsonist is really good, too. It gives fire damage and life regen. Um, we don't have the points for that, though. But I'm just going to keep, in, like, going on and showing you guys. You've got, like, Devotion here, which has adjacent life as well. You've got two points for Purity of Flesh, which gives you life. Uh, you can come down here, and you also get your double totem nodes right here, Ancestral Bond. You've got Mind Over Matter, so you can fucking be even more tanky because you don't really need to run auras for RF totems. You have your whole Quick Recovery wheel right here. Shamanistic Fury if you need some damage. Um, you could come up here and grab Cruel Preparation. I don't really think it's needed. You can come over here, and then you get your Melding Life wheel, and then you get your Written in Blood. And then to respec to RF, it's probably like 15 to 20 regrets. So if you save up all of your passives, uh, like you don't mess up on your passive points... And uh, on top of not resetting your passive points, you essentially, like, just gather, like, 5 to 10 regrets. You should pretty much be good to go. So, the basics of going Righteous Fire, uh, I can pull up, like, one of my other ones. This was my Shaper Killer. You're going to need, like, some, some basic gear. And I covered this in quite a few of my videos, and I'd highly recommend if you guys are curious to check those out. Because it's going to give you more information than I can give you here, because I'm going to forget, right? Um, Presence of Cheyula is not really going to be needed, nor are we going to have this on day one, so we're just going to start with an Eye of Cheyula. Our shield is definitely going to be a Rise of the Phoenix, there is no doubt about that. Our weapon should be an Ephemeral Edge for low level. If you want a clear speed, you're going to swap it out for like a Bright Beak. Uh, your rings, it doesn't really matter what they are. You don't have to do this plus two, plus three thing. Uh, that's just to get an extra plus one on your purities. It's not really that necessary. Uh, in a two-week race, so don't really focus too hard on that. Just get your rings with, like, essentially dexterity, resistance, ES, whatever you can get. Uh, chess piece should be a Shavs. Of course, we're not going to have a Shavs day one, so it's going to be swapped with a Solaris Lorica. Uh, belt should be Baited Breath, no doubt about it. Uh, baited Breath, super good. The only difference is 
Bated Breath is better for, like, breaches. Um, like, running breaches, because you basically chain Vault Discipline, and then you get 50% increased Energy Shield Recharge. Crystal Belt, though, is in general, I think, better for mapping. Because if you Essence Craft a Crystal Belt with Intelligence, you can get, like, 54 in. Um, which will actually end up giving you more overall ES than a Bated Breath, assuming you have, like, a Flat Roll as well. And then you can get, like, Reduced Flask Effect... Or, sorry, you can get, like, Increased Flask Effect Duration or Reduced Flask Charges use. Boots, I usually go with Sintrek. Um, they're just super easy. They're super good. They give you 30 decks, which saves, us, like, an entire node in the tree, right? They give Intelligence. They have 200 ES, and they give 30% movement speed. They're solid. Ideally, the most important thing for you is you want to get that, that Enchant. Um, another good pair of, like... To, like, to go boots are Rainbow Strides. Rainbow Strides are nice because they give, like, essentially flat mana, uh, all resistance, 20% movement speed, I think, some spell block. Um, super important, though, uh, that you get these boots with movement speed so your shield charge feels a bit more consistent. And again, you want that regen. Even if it's 1% regen, like if it's a Merc Lab or a Cruel Lab, it's still good. Gloves, absolutely required. Get your Delirium Gloves. Uh, Delirium will allow you to basically have the 30% more damage over time, which essentially is a 5-link. And that pretty much covers that. Your Helmet, um, helmet. I think we're going to go with an Essence Crafted Helmet. Instead of, obviously, we're not going to have Righteous Fire damage or anything, but I can go with an Essence Crafted Helmet for like reduced uh, reservation cost of Auras. And the reduced reservation cost of auras hopefully will allow us to not need a 21 blood magic. And we can go with a 20 blood magic. So hopefully by day 2 or 3 we can have all our auras on. Um, because we're going to have to drop something initially. Or we can use like a conqueror's potency or whatever it's called. Your flask entirely up to you. Uh, obviously you want to get a witchfire brew. Witchfire brew is probably your most important. You need to have at least one ruby flask. You need to have at least one type of... Uh, so, uh, sulfur flask, so that's three flasks kind of locked into place. Some other things to note um, is I'm going to go ahead and try out... Do you guys remember like my um, POE Unique Jewels? My mana variation that I did? Um, I think people were all... They got like super excited about that. But uh, it wasn't really like a full-on mana guardian build. It's just it uses mana to help scale your energy shield. And it's called Healthy Mind. It's this jewel right here. So it's 15 to 20% increased maximum mana. Increase in reductions to life and radius are transformed to mana at 200% of their value. So basically when it's time to go low life righteous fire, you can put one of the jewels in right here, right? Because you're gonna respect to go up here. And by putting it in there, this 5% life turns into 10% mana with a 5% mana roll, which makes it 15% mana. Combat stamina turns into basically 10% mana. And then you have the 20% mana off the node itself, the jewel, which is great. Then you can put another one in right here, because this will hit Devotion, and you want Devotion for the increased effect of Curse. Uh, so you, sorry, increased effect of non-Curse auras, so that you can get the extra plus one on your Purity of Fire, um, and eventually your other ones. And then you could put one here for, for like quick recovery, but I don't recommend this. In this build, you would take, uh, for example, like Mind Over Matter, and the reason why is for the Inspiration. Inspiration gives you a ton of mana and uh, basically uh, percentage mana, and all of that together will scale with the Guardian node, which I don't know if I can show you on this tree specifically, because it won't let me show it. Um, but yeah, the Guardian node basically is like a percentage of your mana is given as an aura. Um, a percentage of your reserve mana is given as an aura, like a discipline. And that scales off of, I, I don't know if it's your aura effect or if it's your uh, percentage ES nodes. It's one or the other. But either way, you can still get like probably like two to 3,000 ES at the beginning of the game just by reserving mana. Uh, and that's really good. That's a really cheap method as well that I feel a lot of people still don't really know too much about. Anyway, that's pretty much about it for the build. Um, I do want to state that the dates are overlapping, meaning that the Path of Exile beta release... Or sorry, not beta release. The beta wipe slash new content release so i think act eight uh with merc lab is sometime next week and it's saturday today meaning that there's it's going to be overlapped with this because this is a two-week race so if i'm not enjoying myself too much in the race maybe i'll only play for a couple days and then immediately go jump to the beta reset or the beta wipe and uh, play to act eight there test out some of my new builds that i've been wanting to test out since we'll have merc and uber lab but for now i'm going to go ahead and give it a shot uh, one of my goals for this stream that we're going to do today is going Low Life Righteous Fire by the end of the stream. 
I don't know if that's gonna happen. It's something I think that's gonna be pretty cool. It'd be pretty fun getting my character like ready to go already so I can wake up tomorrow and just start crushing content. Um, but who knows? You know, we'll find out later. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Remember, if you want to pull up this tree specifically where I was looking at, all you got to do is type exclamation mark profile in my stream, literally like this. And it will pop up with my character listing and you can see everything located right here. Anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.